If you've gotten this far with your podcast, there's only a couple more steps involved and you are ready to launch. Can you believe that? So today what we're going to go over in this video is how to prepare your RSS feed. Now, in order to submit your podcast to iTunes and other services like Stitcher Radio, you need to create an RSS feed. And what an RSS feed is, it's basically a file that tells iTunes or Stitcher Radio where your podcast lives and provides all the information related to your podcast as well as where your MP3 files are stored. Okay, and the easiest way to create an RSS feed is to host it on a platform like WordPress. Okay, and so for the purposes of today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create an RSS feed using your WordPress blog. Okay, and so if you don't already have a WordPress blog, uh, you can follow some of my other directions that are going to be posted below this video that will walk you through the process of installing WordPress. But in order to install your podcast on WordPress, you're also going to need a plugin called the Blueberry PowerPress plugin. And this is a free plugin. Just do a search for it on Google. I'll also post a link to it directly underneath this video. And make sure you download it. And you're going to have to have WordPress installed already. And you're going to have to have this Blueberry Power plugin available. And then you'll be, be ready to begin this tutorial. Okay, so this is the admin interface of my WordPress blog. And the first thing you want to do is you're going to want to install that Blueberry PowerPress plugin. So you're going to want to go to Plugins, Add New. And you're going to want to click on Upload. And then you want to choose the file. And this is going to be your zip file with your plugin. It's going to be called Blueberry uh, something.zip. And so you want to click on the zip file and then go ahead and install the plugin. And once it's installed, you see, should see this PowerPress link in the lower left. Okay, and so we're going to go ahead and click on that. And here you're going to see a bunch of settings. And just keep in mind as you're following this video, Blueberry Pot PowerPress uh, is going to undergo a lot of plugin updates. And while the different options that I'm going to be showing you in this tutorial are going to be more or less the same no matter which version of PowerPress you have, some of the menu options might be in different places once you actually install your plugin. But I'm going to go over all the options so that you understand what they are. So no matter where they choose to rearrange the menu items, you'll understand what each one does. Okay, so on this welcome screen, what's really nice about the PowerPress plugin is that by default, most of the settings are already set the way you want them to be. Okay, and so under if you scroll down under advanced options, you have just make sure you have the audio player options checked off and the video player options checked off. And I'm just going to go over two of these options. Chances are you're not going to have to have them checked off, but I, in case you want to do some of these things, I thought I'd just explain these options a little bit. So custom podcast channels are when you're hosting a podcast that has multiple different versions of media files. So let's say you have a video file, an audio file, and an audio file. You would want to have this checked off so that when you actually post a post in WordPress, it actually has players for both the audio and video. And chances are, if you're listening to this tutorial, chances are you're just interested in a podcast, so you probably should not have this checked off. Okay. Category podcasting is basically if you want to run multiple different podcasts on your blog. So let's say I wanted to have a podcast on entrepreneurship as well as a podcast on e-commerce. Separate ones, by checking this category podcasting tab here, I can generate two separate feeds, one separate one for e-commerce and one separate one based on uh, entrepreneurship, depending on the category with which I categorize the posts. Okay, And once again, if this is going to be your only podcast, you're not going to have to check any of these items. Okay, So just for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to show you everything on all the options in advanced mode. Uh, by default, Blueberry has this really dumbed down mode called the default mode, which basically you know, dumbs down a lot of the options and hides a lot of the options. And in order for you to understand what each one does, I thought I'd just go over them so that in the event that any of the menu items get rearranged, you still understand what's going on. Okay, and so now I'm going to go over some of the basic settings. And for the purposes of 99% of the podcasts that people are going to try to start, the really only the two check boxes that you need to be checked off is the media URL and the media file size and duration when you're configuring your podcast. All of these other things are just very fine-tuned options, which chances are you're not going to have to use at all. Yeah, so just leave the basic settings alone. 
And the most important fields are the ones I'm going to show you now, which are the feed section. Remember, the whole purpose of all this exercise is to establish an RSS feed for your podcast. Okay, So make sure you have enhance all feeds checked off. And this is actually the address after we're all done with all of this of where your feed is going to be. So this feed is the feed that you're going to be submitting to iTunes and Stitcher Radio, telling them where to find all of your podcast info from. Okay. So under here, the feed title. Uh, by default, it's going to just pick the name of your blog. So make sure you actually create a name for your podcast and put it here. And so in this case, for this example, I've named this podcast the Test Podcast. And in the description, make sure you have some sort of tagline for your podcast as well. Under how many items to show in your feed, make sure you make this a large number, like 100 or 500 or whatnot, because this number is going to determine how many episodes are actually going to show up in iTunes. Okay. I don't know why it's set so, for so low, but in general, you want people to be able to discover all of your podcasts when they find your podcast on iTunes. So make this a high number. Right now, I have mine at, set at 100, but when I exceed 100, I'll probably end up setting this number higher. Okay. Make sure you have a copyright here. I just use my LLC name. And outside of all this other stuff, these are just optional fields. Under parental rating, this really only applies to internet on connected TV. So it doesn't really apply. You can just leave this at no rating specified. <laughs> okay, and under the iTunes tab, if you're going to submit your podcast to iTunes, and of course you are because iTunes is the most popular pod podcasting platform around, you're going to want to fill all this stuff out. Okay, and so this first field, the iTunes subscription URL, you can't really fill in until you've actually submitted your podcast to iTunes. So leave that blank for now. But under the iTunes program subtitle, you're going to want to give a name for your podcast. And just if you remember that last video where I was teaching how to create your ID tags for your MP3 files, you're going to want to use your podcast title here and just cut and paste it over. The program summary is basically an overview of what your podcast is all about. And I would just keep it kind of short and simple, just outline the salient points about why, why someone would want to listen to your podcast. And once again, all this verbiage is going to go into iTunes. Okay. And this iTunes program keywords are going to be keywords with which, uh, you know, when people do a search in iTunes, they're going to find your podcast that way. So it's very important to enter in all 12 keywords separated by commas for all the possible keywords that are going to describe the content for your podcast. You're also going to want to select a category for your podcast. And once again, this is very important because this determines which category you're placed in in iTunes. Under iTunes Explicit, now this is kind of one of those options where if there's any sort of cursing involved in your podcast, uh, you're going to want to mark your podcast as explicit because Apple is going to be pretty strict about this sort of thing. If people start complaining that there's excessive cursing or profanity in your podcast and it's not marked as explicit, you may get banned. Okay. So there's also this gray area where if some of your iTunes episodes are clean and some of them are profane, you actually also have the option of marking individual episodes as explicit. Okay. But in general, if you think that your podcast is going to have profanities and whatnot for the most part, then I would mark it as explicit. But in general, it's in your best interest to mark it as not explicit because that will widen your audience. Some people will not listen to your podcast at all because it is marked explicit. So just keep that in mind. You're going to want to put your iTunes email. And again, this is the email associated with your iTunes account. Under artwork, you're going to want to upload that same 1400 by 1400 pixel image to your blog here under the artwork and images tab of PowerPress. And we've already done this already when we were tagging our MP3, so just go ahead and use the same image. And once you have done all of these uh, settings in PowerPress, it's now time to actually post your first podcast. Okay, and so I'm just going to go walk you through a sample post here. Okay, so when you're ready, you know, in a previous uh, video, I've already showed you how to prepare your MP3 file. One step I'm going to show you is you're going to have to upload your MP3 file to your hosting provider. And the one I recommended to you was called Libsyn. So I'm just going to walk you through the upload process real quick. So I'm just going to log into my Libsyn account. Okay, so this is what your Libsyn interface should look like once you log in. 
And what you want to do is you want to go under content, click on add new episode, and then you want to go under add media file, upload from hard drive, and then you want to pick the mp3 file that you prepared from the previous video that we had. So I'm just going to pick an arbitrary uh, mp3 file that I have. Okay, and so once your file is done uploading, you need to give this episode a name. And so I'm just going to call it MWQHJ099 Test Podcast. And then all you have to do is you need to hit publish. Okay, and as soon as you publish your episode, it will give you a URL which will tell you where this file is actually being hosted from. So I want to take this and I want to cut and paste it over to my WordPress blog and I'm going to show you now how to publish your first podcast episode. You want, so you want to click on add new, give the host the uh, post a title, so I'm going to call it test podcast and you want to scroll down and under podcast episode you want to actually paste the URL that we just got, click verify and if you typed in the URL correctly it should say media verified successfully and then up here you want to put the show notes for your podcast. So typically what I do is I often include a very nice large graphic of the name of my guest or a graphic that kind of represents the content for the podcast. And then I also have verbiage on the photo that tells people what the podcast is all about. And the reason you want to do this is because you want your podcast to be shared as widely as possible. And by creating a nice graphic, it actually makes it really stand out for Facebook users. And also people will also begin uh, pinning your podcast episode on Pinterest. And Pinterest is actually one of these underutilized social media networks for podcasts. Okay, so I would just insert a photo here. And then usually here I'd write verbiage about what the podcast is all about. And then usually I have a section called things you will learn. And then finally I have a resources section that basically outlines any sort of services or links or books that we talked about during the podcast episode. Okay. The other thing you also want to include is you want to use this short code, which is bracket PowerPress unbracket, which is actually telling, telling WordPress where you want the actual media player to be displayed. So in this case, I want it to be displayed right underneath the photo. And once you have all that done, and you know, once again, the format, I have a special audio format for my blog, so I'm going to click audio here. And once you're all ready to go, you just hit publish. And then you can view your post here. And as you can see here, uh, this is where the photo would be. This is the player that's going to play your podcast, verbiage about what the podcast is all about, things you will learn, and then resources. And that's pretty much it. You've just published your first podcast episode. Now let's go take a quick look to make sure that the actual feed was generated correctly. So I'm going to go back to my dashboard under PowerPress and then feeds. And then I'm just going to go ahead and cut and paste this URL into my browser just to make sure it's good. And as you can see here, this is what the feed looks like. Here is that podcast episode that we just published along with the mp3 file that we just uploaded to Libsyn. So once you see this in your feed, that means you successfully published your podcast and your feed is ready to be submitted into iTunes.